Really happy to be here with Emily Ahrens. Um, I met Emily because she was part of a um, summit, you could say, a conference, a virtual event series that we were both speaking for. And I really, uh, I actually enjoyed listening to a lot of the series, but Emily, yours was one of my favorites. Um, I felt you were so generous, so authentic in what you were sharing. Um, and I just said, I have to, you know, I have to bring you on and share you with my audience as well. So Emily, welcome. Thanks for being Thank here. Thank you. I appreciate that, George. And yeah. um, that word authentic is one that I get a lot. Uh, yes. Compliments on my authenticity, compliments on my energy. So uh, thank yeah. you for that yeah. so much. Kindred spirits. And um, I I love the business that you've built. It's It's amazing. You, I guess, started out as an energy healer, right? Or started out yeah. as a as a spiritual healer, yeah. Um, and and that was, and then over the years, as you've developed the, the business, you have Oracle cards deck, you have yep. a spiritual journal that you uh, products, you have obviously your energy healing and and all that's associated with that. And then over the years, I'm sure people are asking you, how did you build this? And yeah. then you started helping people with it, and now you have like. You have a business, part of your business is helping other spiritual service providers yes. to build and grow their businesses as yeah. well. Yeah. Right. I am yeah. the leading, I am the leading educator in spiritual entrepreneurship. So it's one of those things Amazing. I, I did start off in a brick and mortar as a massage therapist, as an energy practitioner. And for over a decade, I was like the broke healer who could, and I knew I had this like gift to share with the world. I couldn't even quite identify it for so long. And it was when I started to transition my business from brick and mortar to online, when I started to really have to market myself in a different way. And my business blew up it, in the, in the year that I started to really focus on my growth and setting goals and really achieving new things. I started to fully trust my intuition to grow my business, my business 10X that first year. And from there, you know, you're right. People just started coming out, like, tell me how you did it. And at first I was just telling anybody who wanted to know. And really more in the last couple of years, I've been really honing into helping spiritual entrepreneurs as coaches, healers, and leaders to grow a sustainable business that they love. Yeah, that's fantastic. And we were talking before we started recording <clears throat> three things that clients most need to hear from you and most need to learn from you. And uh, I want to just, I want to dive into those three as for, you know, in the short time we have, we'll, we'll do as much as we can. Um, the first one we started talking about was, well, you've already begun talking about intuition, like using yeah. your intuition in your business. For those who are watching, listening, who are spiritual practitioners, intuition is, you know, you're, you're not new to it, but, but I, I want to hear from you. How do you use intuition for your business and how do you guide others to, 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 to do that? Anything you want to share there? It's great. Yeah. Well, I'll start to talk to everybody, right? So not everybody believes that they were born with intuition. I certainly didn't think that I was born with intuition. And for most of us, we've been taught our whole life not to trust our self and our instincts that it's not responsible and that, you know, we get these intuitive hits and we need to fact check them everywhere. And so we kind of learn over time to dismiss those instincts, but we are all born with these instincts, whether it is turn right or bring the umbrella, even though the, the, scun, the sun is like shining and it's very nice. And you're like, I don't know why would I need this? Um, but we, we always second guess our intuition later to regret it. Now I've never in my life heard anybody say I trusted my intuition and I completely regret it. So this is part of what I do is to help you to remember your own natural instincts. And so when you can start to quiet down. And so the, the first tip that I would give everybody is to start with just a one minute daily meditation where you can just do some simple breathing in and out, deep breathing, get into your body. Your left brain is in charge of strategy and things that are analytical and, you know, 
That's that fact checker in your head. Your right brain is in charge of your intuition and it's also integrated with your body your artistic side. And so if you think about it, if you can practice every day, just breathing and getting back into your body, feeling safe in your body, knowing your body senses, even just breathing right now, notice, are there any places in my body that feel tightness or tension? Is there any place where my breath is getting stuck? I mean, even just that little piece of awareness, we typically don't give ourselves that opportunity to check in with. And so when you're starting to check in every single day, you start to get really in the rhythm of like, what is happening in my body? Where are these instincts coming from? And so you'll start to naturally be inclined to make different choices or to do things that really honor your body. And I notice that um, even when I start to come down with what would be a cold, I'll just tune into that. What is it my body is trying to tell me that I haven't slowed down enough to listen to yet. My body will start to tell me no matter what is going on, your body carries such innate wisdom. Um, Even I had a friend who has a new puppy and she was having difficulty with crate training. I said, what does your gut tell you? And she said, I feel like I need to bring him upstairs. Like, okay, well, like just do that. You know, it's like, we don't give ourselves permission to just make decisions based on a feeling, but those feelings lead you like little breadcrumbs to the next right decision and the next right decision. Where if we're in fear and we're not trusting our intuition, we can sometimes feel like, well, we need to know how the whole story plays out to start walking that path because I don't want to get on the wrong path. There is no such thing as the wrong path. Everybody knows this. No matter what decision you've made, you either get that lesson that you needed or you get that win. Like, okay, great. So you're always redirected just like a GPS. So how I use my intuition in my business is is so deep. It's so full. Every single decision I make in my business is through my intuition. Um, whether I'm going to create a program, um, and I'll, I'll, I guess I'll kind of pair back to where I first started using my intuition, which was I sat in meditation. I opened up sort of a deeper channel within my meditation. And I asked if there was a program that I could offer that would sell out. I'd never had a program before, ever. Not only did I never have a program before, but I never had anything that had sold out. I was only selling one-on-one healing sessions. So I connect with my intuition. And I said, is there a program out there that I could offer that would sell out? And I got this hit for a six-week intro to meditation for entrepreneurs. And I said, okay, so what's, so I got the name of it. And I said, what am I going to teach each six weeks? Each of the six weeks, I got what I was going to teach. Okay, great. When am I going to offer it? And my instinct said, you'll offer it in two weeks time. And I said, okay, great. Um, How many people is it for? I got 10. And so I felt like I just got like a cheat sheet. I got my program title. I got all the content for it. I got when it's going to be released. I got the price point. I got when it's being released. So like all the stuff that we usually get all in our head about, I just had it like spelled out in front of me. And so I had the option, like we always do, to follow it or just to disregard it completely and be like, I'll just think about it or or, or, I'll overthink about it to death a little bit longer. And my instinct said, post on Facebook that you're going to make an announcement tonight at 7 p.m. with this big, great news. So for me, I posted that and I went outside because I was freaking out. I went outside, my heart's racing, I'm sweating. Everything in my body is going into panic mode, fight or flight. My system is like, you can't teach meditation for six weeks. You have a terrible voice. You don't, nobody's gonna like it. No one's gonna go for it. You, you're you not even a meditation teacher. You know how to meditate, but who makes you a meditation teacher? Also, there are so many other people who meditate and teach people how to meditate. Why would anybody want it from you? And it just kept going. So I went for this walk in my backyard to chill out. Meanwhile, my ego is just going nonstop to the point where I had convinced myself, I will not teach this class. I will not make this announcement. And as soon as I get inside, I'm going to go on my phone and I'm going to delete that post that said I was going to make that announcement like it never happened. But as soon as I was walking into my house on my porch banister, I saw a little ladybug. And one of my friends who passed away in spirit, she's in spirit. Uh, She passed away. And every time she comes to visit me, she shows up as a ladybug. Wow, that's powerful. I saw that ladybug. I got a full body chill and I just got this deep knowing you got to do it. Just keep going. 
And so from that point on, I started to do what it takes. And by the way, I did that live, I did that announcement. One person was on, <laughs> I didn't have an audience. I just, it was just me back then. You know, now if I start a live video, I'll probably have like 30 people on with me. And at the time I didn't, I had one person who showed up and it was up to me to find a way to get the message out there so that 10 people could join the program. And I took that responsibility. Again, I'm not just taking this higher message of like, great, the 10 people will just fall out of thin air. I'll manifest them. I put like feet on the ground and I went and I found people to come into my program. Now, this program started off as a six week introduction to meditation. It is now a multi six figure revenue stream because it wasn't six weeks. I haven't, I literally not stopped teaching meditation since then. And there are over 200 meditations in the library. It's my mastery ascension membership. And at the time I had no idea what it was going to become, but I just started following those little breadcrumbs. Yeah. This is, this is amazing. What a great story. And you know, the result uh, we can see today. Um, I love that you talk about following the following the the the, the, the intuition, the gut instinct, etc. Because um, and not like fat fat checking it to death. Because here's the thing: like particularly when it comes to your business, mm -hmm. it's your I call it the your authentic business <laughs> means that there no one can give you the prescribed path that's perfect for you. And like you said, like, oh, I got to make sure that, you know, um, I'm doing the right, the right strategy. Well, the right. right strategy oftentimes is what you're, as you keep training and following and training your intuition is what your intuition is giving you because you have, I mean, even just if, even if we didn't talk about the spiritual stuff, I mean, your, your body and your experiences is so much richer in knowledge than what mm -hmm. some business coach or, you know, educator can, can teach you. And so thank you for giving us that permission yet again. Uh, there's so much we need. Um, this is great. And and I want to kind of just transition a bit into the second, uh, another really important message you need to share with your, your people that people need to hear from you is how do we open ourselves to selling? Yeah. Because that, and you've just told us a story of how you did that. Um, many of us, every time I ask my audience, when was the last time you, uh, you know, you, you announced to your people that you have, you have a service or you have a product or something. And usually people are like, I can't remember the last time I did it, or it's so long ago. I'm like, what are you talking? I make sure I do it at least once a month, you know, maybe sometimes twice a month. Like, 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 like some of us, we're blessed to have become open to the idea of selling. We're no longer pushing it away, avoiding it. Uh, resisting it. Tell us about how you opened up to that more and more. And what do you say to people who are say, well, selling's not spiritual? Oh, yeah. Oh, I love those people. Um, I think it's selling what is selling is one of the most spiritual things that you can do. I think it's one of the most loving things that you can do. Um, so one of the things that I had to do was some very deep healing on myself and receiving that deep healing because from a place of uh, unworthiness and lack in myself is was was at the root of why it was difficult for me to sell and when I used to be in a brick and mortar I often discounted things so I would say would you like this wonderful healing session but I'm going to give it for 30 percent off Constantly. I was like the discount queen. I was always discounting myself. Here's a new offer I've got. It's a two hour session with all these amazing things in it. And for a limited time, you can get it completely free. Like I would, it was like insane, <laughs> you know, and because I didn't value myself, mm. I didn't value my time. Yeah. And I noticed that after becoming a mother was when everything started to shift in my mi mindset because I now wanted to be home with my son, be present with him. And the time that I had with him, I wanted to really enjoy. And I really couldn't do that when I was leaving for for work and having to give to so many people. I was like, this I shouldn't have to trade my time so much. And so my my hourly time became more valuable all of a sudden. And so I realized that there was a way for me to give to people without having to trade my time so much, which was the form of the group program. That was the first time I did group programs or group healing sessions. That was one way that I started to value my time. But part of it is 
realizing the mindset shift. So anyway, I did some deep healing on myself and I continue to do this because we don't just heal ourselves one and it's like one and done. It's kind of like a progressive stairway. You know, you don't sweep the bottom step and you're like, done, the stairs are clean. You have to constantly do maintenance. And the higher you go, the more impact you make, the more income you make, the more you're going to see other old issues coming back to the surface. It's not that you didn't work on it. It's that you're at a new level. It's a new level for that issue. And so our healing is progressive. And so I realized I had these martyrdom healing wounds. I had these, uh, witch wounds. I had these, uh, broke wounds. I had a lot of things inside of me that kept me restricted and blocked energetically that I needed to clear from myself and through all of my lifetime so that I could be here and be present and to give. Because if there was one thing I always knew, even if I didn't know how, I always knew from a very young age, I was here to give. I knew I was here to help other people. And so while I didn't define that until more recent years, um, I knew I wanted to give to people and being of service to people is how I look at that being of service. So if you, and, and I would say this to my whole audience and probably yours as well, if you know, you're here to help people, you know it. Okay. So if you know, you're here to help people, you owe it to them to help them. There are people out there struggling every single day. Maybe it's with uh, anxiety, depression, mental health issues. Maybe it's in their business. They're not making enough money. Maybe in their, they're trying to sell a house, whatever it is that your business is, there is somebody who's struggling with whatever that thing is. And they are all suffering in silence. And so there's no way for them to connect with you if you don't sell yourself, if you don't put yourself out there. If you think about when you're driving down the road, how do you know when the house is for sale? There is a sign. And because of the demand in the market nowadays, there's usually a sign before the sign, the sign that says it's coming soon, get ready to buy me. And so I really believe we all have to be marketers in that way as well is to to raise that flag, raise your hand and say, this is available for you. If you are suffering with X, Y, or Z, I can help you. Here are the ways that I can help you and, and be of service to you. And so for me, I also have to take the, making it mean something, making it personal. So, you know, if I'm selling, I'm not selling me, I'm selling the transformation that working with me provides. So I'm going to help you unlock your intuition. I'm going to help you to attract more so my clients. I'm going to help you make more financial abundance. I know that because it has been proven so many times over that it seems almost redundant at this point for me to say it so many times, but it's a fact. And the results speak for themselves. When people do my energy healings, it changes their life. It brings them to tears. It helps them to connect with lost loved ones, with pets, with their intuition, with their higher self. It helps them to heal in places they didn't even realize they needed healing. I mean, I could keep going. I, and it's not to brag. And by the way, bragging is not bad either. It's to say what a fact is. These are the transformations that are possible through working with me. If that's something that you want, great. I got it all day. I got a lot of different ways that you can receive this transformation. Maybe my high level program isn't for you right now, but this thing is. And so I have sort of a catalog of various ways that people can work with me starting at $1. I have $1 meditations. $1. Because this is really good. I, I appreciate you bringing this up because a lot of times service providers have like one thing they offer. Yeah. And then the one thing they offer, they are like, well, if people don't buy it, you know, this is why Th then it, it impacts their self-worth. <laughs> yeah. like people aren't buying yeah. this one thing. So tell but us about why the they fact that you want this. It. What's that? But also why they aren't buying it. Most people are not actually surveying their audience. They're making assumptions why they didn't buy did somebody actually tell you, George, I didn't buy your program because it was too much money? Did I tell you I didn't buy your program because it was not the season I buy programs like that in? No, I survey my audience all the time. Almost like it's like it's a natural impulse for me to sell and Same survey, here. sell yes. and survey, right? Yes. Because if you don't get that survey out, you are making assumptions. And we all know what happens when you assume. And that is ridiculous. When you survey people, you're getting from their mouth 
why they didn't buy. Maybe it's because they didn't fully understand the offer. Maybe it's because they didn't want that group program. They wanted you on your own as a one-on-one -on -one high ticket offer. They didn't want it at that time because they weren't ready, but they would be ready another time. So, so, you, so you do the, why didn't you buy survey? Oh yeah. Every, all the time compulsively. Yeah. That's... But I also do, I also do, are you interested in this sort of thing? Because I believe in seeding things as well. So, you know, I'll get a hit for a program and I'll say, oh, that sounds like a lot of fun, that it's something that people can do on their own. They can take these sort of energy healing, they can start to learn some more strategy and they can apply it. So I do a survey. Would you ever be interested in sort of like a done for you on demand training that does X, Y, and Z? And they start raising their hands online. Oh, okay. So there is some people, there are some people who would be interested in that. Okay. I've had this meditation that can help you to reset your nervous system. Is this something that you feel like you have a lot of anxiety struggling with? People raise their hands. So there's lots of ways that you can survey people. That's not a survey also. And that's something I teach to my students all the time is how to get that two-way feedback. You need to be in the feedback loop and hear what they're saying. So one of the best leading questions that you can ever ask your audience is when it comes to blank, what you do, what do you struggle the most with? So maybe it is when it comes to being authentically yourself, where do you struggle the most? When it comes to opening your intuition, where do you struggle the most? When it comes to making soulful sales, where do you struggle? I mean, like fill in the blank. It's that easy. And when people start talking back, they will literally tell you everything you need to know. I gave us, I did a survey and over a hundred people responded. It gave me endless amounts of content. I broke it down into sections. I made a whole training on it. Like it was unbelievable. And I still use these responses because they are gold. People yeah. are telling you from their heart, like, please help me. I'm struggling with this. Give me the answer. I love that so much. I I, I keep telling people, yeah, it's um, it's like, if you don't do the market research, how do you do marketing? <laughs> it's like, it's, yeah, yeah. it seems so obvious, but like, that's the thing is that, mm. you know, George, like, it's like the threshold for starting an online business is, is minimal. There's nothing really you need to do except for like, hang your online shingle. Yeah. And I started my business back when I was 22 and I wrote a business plan back then. Um, it happens to be an award-winning business plan, but I wrote a plan and I don't think anybody really does the legwork to write a plan to know their vision, their mission, and their values, to know who they are in the marketplace, to know what their unique selling proposition is, to know how their prices compared to others are, to know like what seasonality, like it's like, they're just kind of like winging it and wondering why it's not successful. And so when people like me come in and they say, let's bring some structure into this thing. It's like, I got this vision from my guides when I was putting this program together it's a year long coaching program. And I got this vision that there's like people who are trying to build a house with like a couple bricks, a couple screws and some two by fours. And they're like, why won't my house work in any little storm? <laughs> it's like, they're making this that. like haphazard teepee when then like <laughs> any gust of wind blows on. Right. And they're like, why my house is broken. It doesn't yeah. work. I'm terrible at business. My, nobody <laughs> wants my thing. Like, or you could build a foundation and walls and yeah. a floor and a window and maybe yeah. use like a stronger roof. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, this is really great. I mean, I, and I'm looking at the time. Amazing. Yeah. Our time is pretty much fl flown by. I want to I want to make sure people. Uh, so, I mean, you've, you've hinted at some of the programs that you offer. Yeah. I will, of course, put your website and, okay. and you know, all the various links below. But um if someone were interested in working with you who are hearing this, a lot of my audience are. Uh, I would say soulpreneurs, mm -hmm. soulpreneurs, fellow soulpreneurs. Um, what's what's a good next step? Yeah, they're you're my people. People, if you're still yeah. watching, you kind of like my vibe. Um, uh, you can go to my website, emilyarons.com. That's how you'll find everything right on the homepage. You can get started with a $1 meditation. Um, I'm most active on Instagram and Facebook. So definitely send me a DM. Let me know that you found me through George and let me know like what really resonated the most about this interview. And if you have questions, I am in the DMs and my team is also. So um, we're happy to help you however 
you need. And wherever you're at in your journey, there is something that we can do to work together and help make that a more wonderful journey and certainly profitable. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Emily. Uh, wonderful to have you share. And I got inspired by, by these ideas as well. So thank you. Thanks for having me.